Chris Shepard here and today I'm going to show you some cool jazz voicings just to kind of switch it up a little bit and uh, you know broaden your horizons. So let's get down. So all these examples today are going to be in the key of F major. So if you're in the key of F, your one chord is F, two chord, G minor, A minor is your three, B flat major is your four, C7 is your five, D minor is your six, E diminished is your seven. I think I need to get my guitar intonated. And we're back to F major. Anywho, so when we want to play jazz chords, what we do is we add the seventh note to each one of those triads. F major seven, G minor seven, a minor 7, B flat major 7, C dominant 7. Anytime you see a letter name, say B flat, or C, or A sharp, and there's a 7 directly after it, that stands for dominant 7th, which means you're taking a major triad and adding a flatted 7th or a minor 7th to that chord. So now we have D minor 7. E minor 7 flat 5, a little tricky to play up here. Then back to F major 7, which is our 1 chord. Today, we're going to be using examples using a 2-5-1 progression, which is essentially the most common progression used in jazz and traditional pop standards from, say, like the 30s to the 50s, before rock and roll kind of hit. So our first chord is G minor 7. in the key of F major. So our second finger is going to be on the low E at the third fret. Then we're going to mute the A string with our second finger. So we don't want it to ring out. We're going to mute it so you touch it ever so slightly. Then we just take our third finger and bar out on the D, G, and B string at the third fret. G minor 7. Also a great funky chord. So then we move to our C dominant 7th or C7 chord. So if you take a classic C major chord, okay, and you just take your 3rd finger, pop it up a string, so now you're down on the low E string at the 3rd fret, then you take your pinky, put it on the 7th fret, oh, the 7th fret, you put it on the 3rd fret on the uh, G string, and you get the C dominant 7th or C7. Once again, our third finger is muting out the A string. That's very important. A cool thing about this chord too is that you can uh, make for like a cool like ragtime kind of sound by alternating your third finger on the A and the E string. Check it out. Next up is our one chord, an F major seventh. So I look at it like this, if I have an A minor chord and I just get rid of my first finger to play the A minor, I have this shape. So and then I just bring my first finger over to the F note, that gives me my F major 7 chord. So we have first finger on the first fret on the low E, second finger goes on the B string at the first fret, third finger goes on the D string at the 2nd fret, and then uh, our 4th finger goes on to the 2nd fret on the G string. So that sounds like this. Then, to get back to it, we make an F sharp diminished 7th at the 2nd fret on the low E string. Our first finger is going to bar on the D, G, and B at the first fret. Then we take our third finger, pop it down onto the second fret on the G string, F sharp diminished seventh. Alright, 
so that's progression number one. Two, five, one, diminished of the, I guess we would call that a seven diminished seven of the two. Uh, but basically it's just a leading chord back to the two chord to repeat the progression. Now check this out. Now that you have that diminished shape, if you slide it up three frets, that's going to take us into our next pattern, which is another 2-5-1, still an F major. So now, we have G minor 7th, we got 2nd finger 6th fret on the A, 1st finger on the D string at the 5th, 4th uh, finger on the G at the 7th, uh, and then our 3rd six, uh, finger at the 6th fret on the B. That's another inversion of a G minor 7th chord with the root being right here. And we got a great chord. Check this. Ready? I love this one. This is a C7. You could also call it C over B flat, but in this case, we'll just call it C7. Second finger at the sixth fret. Boom. And then one, one, one on the D, G, and B. Still muting out the A string. Then we go to this chord, which I love. This is an F major seventh. We have our second finger on the low E at the fifth fret, first finger at the uh, third fret on the D, and then five and five respectively. And then I take that diminished shape again, which takes me back to it. Now check this move out, boys and girls. We're gonna take that same shape of diminished, slide it up three frets. That gets us to our next one. Now that one has a little bit of a dissonance, but it's still nice. So we have G minor 7. 10th fret on the E with your 3rd finger. 1st finger at the 8th fret on the D. Pinky on the G string at the 10. And then 1st finger as well at the 8th fret on the B. G minor 7. Then we have C7. We've got our first finger on the low E at the 8, second finger at the 8 on the D, third finger on the B at the 8, then our pinky comes in at the end at the 9th fret on the G. Now we move on to F major 7. So this is very similar to the C shape we did earlier with the finger over. Check it out. We just slide that up, add our pinky at the 9th fret, F major 7. And then, oh my god. We have our diminished shape again, and now we're just going to take that diminished shape and move it up another three frets. Which then leads us into our last round. Now this is a little tougher up here on the guitar, but just to serve the purpose of the exercise. We have a G minor 7. We have our pinky at the 13th fret on the low E. We have our D string, 12th fret with our second. Third finger at the 12th fret as well on the uh, G string and our first finger um, on the B string at the 11th fret, giving us a G minor 7. Our next shape is C7. We have our third finger on the low E uh, at the 12th fret, first finger at the 10 on the uh, D string, pinky comes down on the 12 on the G string, and then we have our 11th fret with our second finger, completing the C dominant 7th chord. Now this last chord doesn't sound great, it's more of a contextual thing. Sounds a little off because it has the major 7th in the bottom, which usually works more if you're like... Like, like moving along or something. But either way, here it is. 3rd finger to 12th fret, and then we skip the A or mute it out, more to the point. Then 10, 10, 10, D, G, B. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how all that works in context. It's also cool to make sure that you like bop off the fingers a little bit. That gives it more of like a swing to it, even if you're just playing quarter notes. So let's check out the whole thing in context. Here we go. I'm gonna do that again, and then I'm gonna take the diminished shape, slot it up three frets, watch.
And there you have it. Two 5-1 progressions with a bunch of different inversions. Thanks again for watching. This is Chris Shepard for Tone Canyon, keeping it jazzy. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the Tone Canyon channel, share it with others, and uh, leave some comments, and just uh, keep it jazzy.